Hey, welcome back everyone. In this one, we are going to install the Django REST framework and also set up our custom user model. Then we can go ahead and register a user. All right, so the first thing I'm going to need to do is install Django REST framework. So here in my terminal, I'm going to stop the server and then I'm going to install the Django REST framework. So once this has installed, then I'm going to open the project in my code editor, which are where I will be using VS Code in this one, but you can use your, your favorite text editor. So once we have this one up, so now we need to create an app that will manage our users. So right here, I'm going to use Python manage.py start app. So the app is going to be called authentication. It's going to be authenticating users. So once I run that, you can see that we have a new folder created authentication and it has all our app files. So the first thing we do is register these apps that we create. So in settings.py, we need to go to installed apps. And the first thing we are going to actually register is the REST framework app. So make sure you have it in. And then let's register our authentication one. Authentication. All right, so once we have this, now we need to create our custom user model. So here in models.py, as you already know, Django actually ships with an authentication app that can allow us to create users. But then it's not quite flexible. For example, if you wanted to use, to make users log in by email and not username, we need to do a lot of tweaks to make sure it works. So that, that also works for other things like, let's say you want to have custom attributes, like when a user logs in, you want to tell them, oh, you shouldn't, this kind of user should not be like idle for more than five minutes. So those kinds of custom attributes, we are going to need to set up a custom model just so we can enable them. So the first thing we do is actually import some classes that we can use to create this model easily. So here, I'm gonna bring them in. So from Django, contrib auth models, import. So here, we are gonna import abstract, this user, then we import base user manager, this user manager, and then we import the permission mixing permission mixing all right and you see how we'll use this okay so first thing we, we are going to need to do real quick is set up a user manager so class it's gonna be called user manager and this is actually this is what like maintains which query sets we can run so this one is gonna be inheriting from base user manager all right so in here we basically want to override two methods one of them is gonna be create user so here, so dev create user. So this takes itself the username, the email, and then the password. So the original signature here, password is always none. So keep that. Let me actually move this one here so you can see clearly. So now here, we need to first uh, do a simple check. So if username is none, then we need to raise an error. So raise type error, raise type error. Then we can say something like users should have a username. All right, so we'll do the same thing for the email. So I'll copy this get it here and now bring this tab this one so this one is going to be checking the email so if email is none then we have to say user should have an email okay so once we have this now we need to actually go ahead and, and define how a user should be created so here we can do user equals self dot model and now in here, we can supply the, the user's details. So the first one is going to be username. This one is going to be the username that gets passed in into the method. The next thing is going to be the email. So right here, I'm going to supply the email. It's going to be self with normalized email, normalized email. And then we pass the email, of course. Okay, so once we define this, now we need to set a password for the user. So we can do user set underscore password. So it's gonna be the password that gets passed in. So pass password there. 
And now down here, of course, we need to save this. So user.save, and that will take care of creating our normal user. All right. So how do we actually create a super user? Because now we are defining a custom model. So we are taking away all the things we already have on the model that's built in. So we need to also define how a, a super user can be created. So I'm going to copy this. So this one is going to be create super user. All right. So this one, we're basically taking the same things, username, email, and password. But the, of course, the password here, the password here shouldn't be none. So we need to check it. So if password is none, then let's raise an error. Password should not be, should not be none. Okay. That should do. Then, of course, you can enforce more. So in here, you can actually customize this method more. So you define everything that happens there. But for now, let's keep that. So right here, now I'm going to create a user here. And this is going to be equal to self create user. So basically, we want to do everything we did up there. And then we can pass in the same things, so username, email, and password. So that will do the job of setting the password and everything. So it will actually come and run this, initialize the, the new details with the model. And then we want to be running, we want to be running this one again, because it's taken care of in here. So I'm going to remove this. But I want to change a few things. One is going to be the super user status. So we can run is underscore super user. So set this one to true. And we'll define these fields down. So also we set is stuff. So user dot is underscore stuff. So we set it to true too. So once we are done with that, we need to run save, of course, and then we need to return this user. So return user. All right. So now we are done with our manager. So now we need to set up our model class. So down here, I'm going to write class user. So this one is going to inherit from abstract based user and then the permission makes in. So this will give us access to our regular user fields. So let me bring in abstract based user and then permission makes in. All right, so down here, the first thing you're going to need to have is a username. So username. This is going to be models with Chaffield. And this now we can define things like the max length. So max, this is going to be 255. And then we want usernames to be unique. So we have to pass unique because true. All right. So once we have that, now we can define the same thing for the email. But then I want to make this one indexable such that if we are searching for users by username, it becomes fast. So you can write db underscore index equals true. OK. So once we have that, now we need to set up the same thing for the email. So I can actually copy this, duplicate it. So I can set up email equals it's going to be the email field. All right, so that should do it for the email. Then we need to set up one property here called is underscore verified. So previously, with the normal user model that's built in, you want to be able to use things like this. So this is verified is the one we we'll use when we are verifying a user's account, just so we can know if they have verified it or not. So here, it can be models, it's going to be boolean field. And then we need to define a default value. So all of our users will be not will be not verified at, at first. So default would be false. Then let's set up is active. Okay, so copy this. So is active. This one will be true by default. So let's set up is stuff. Is underscore stuff. So this one is going to be 
a boolean field, but then it's going to be false by default. So that only cast on the on the users created using the create super user are the ones that take it up. All right. So the next thing we will do is define a created at created at. So this will help us to know when a user is created. So it can be model the date time field, and then. We want the current timestamp to be inserted when the user is created. So auto now add will be true. So the next thing will be updated at. So I'm going to copy this. So updated at. So this one, we basically want to insert the current, the current timestamp still when they do an update. So we will use auto now. All right, so once we have this, now we need to define what attribute the user will be using to, to log in. So here, we're going to define a constant. So it's going to be username underscore field. So this one now is going to be the email. So by default, Django will expect us to send the, the username when we are logging in. But now we want to be logging in using the email. So the next thing we are going to, to write is define the required fields. So required fields, yeah, so here we, we can define a list. So now we can define all our required fields. So username, of course, is one of them, but you can scale this and add more, more customizations when, that you want. All right, so now that we have that, we need to write like a very important line. So we should need to tell Django how to manage objects of this type user. So for us to be able to do that, we need to write your objects equals and now we can basically instantiate our manager class so user manager like that all right so that should do the next good thing that you can do is set up like a standard str method so str so in here now we can return something like the user's email so return self email okay so there are other properties that would be helpful so we can like run them on a user and get and get like user details so i'm going to create a method called token so here so i'm going to call it actually i'm going to call it tokens so that when we we say so that we can be able to do something like user user dot tokens so dev tokens now this one was text itself and then we want it to be returning the user's tokens. But for now, I'm going to add a pass. So I'm going to let me actually make it return an empty string. We'll get there later. So return that. So for now, we will keep it to this. And now, once we are done doing this, we need to tell Django to use this model for our users. So if we go to our income expenses API settings, so anywhere here, we need to define the auth user model. So auth underscore user model this is going to link to our custom class so which is in authentication dot user all right so what this will do basically is go to our models.py and then use our user user class which is this all right so once we have that now we we are ready to start registering a user so i'm going to be pausing the video here in the next one we'll come and register a user so thanks guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next one.